Do you want to learn about how to invest in the stock market as a total beginner, a complete newbie starting from scratch? Perhaps you also want to retire from corporate or whatever else you're currently doing. If so, you're in the right place. In this video, I'll be sharing with you everything you need to know about investing in the stock market as a complete beginner and potentially using it as a tool to retire early. Here's the thing. I don't want you to buy anything. I don't want anything from you. I just want to share what I know about investing in the stock market and starting my FIRE journey. After watching this video, I guarantee that you'll have a list of actionable steps that you can take to start investing in the stock market to build wealth and potentially using it as a tool to retire early. And if you're new to my world, hi, I'm Cherry. I retired from corporate at 25 years old as a multimillionaire, and I find it so cringy that I have to say this as my intro, but this helps you understand for all the new people. This helps you understand who I am and that I know what I'm talking about. But before we start, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about how to retire early from anything that no longer serves you. So let's get started. So how do I start investing in the stock market as a complete beginner, a newbie, starting from scratch? This is one of the most commonly asked questions I get across all my socials. As you can see, right here. And most people are asking this question because they've been misled by all the lies in the personal finance space, by all the gurus, all the big names. They've been led to believe that the only way to retire early is by investing in the stock market. That is the only way to make passive income. That's the only way to retire early. And that's the only way to become a millionaire. Perhaps that's you. You've been misled by personal finance gurus who are telling you that all you need to do is invest in the stock market and you'll magically become a millionaire become financially free, financially independent, retire early, and become hella rich, just like Graham Stephan, me Kevin, Dave Ramsey, and Jeremy from Financial Education. And yes, they do have a lot of things in common. I'm not gonna say what it is, that's for a separate video, but you get the gist of it. Here's the thing, you're not actually curious about investing in the stock market. You're actually more interested in the promised outcome, the promised return on investment, the promise of being financially independent and retiring early, the promise of becoming rich without doing any work. And yes, I agree with you. It'll be so awesome if we can just throw our money into the stock market and just become rich really quickly without doing any work. Unfortunately, that is not the case. The stock market is not what you think. It is not what you were led to believe. Let me pull back the curtains and show you what the stock market actually is, how it works, and how you can make money with stock market investing and potentially use it as a tool to help you retire early, which is what my channel is all about. So before we talk about what to do, let's first talk about what not to do so you can self-diagnose and check to see if you're making these mistakes currently. Number one, stock pick. Number two, invest money that you don't have or can't bear to lose. Number three, hire a fund manager or buy mutual funds. Number four, copy other people's portfolios. Number five, expect it to make you rich quickly. So let's dive into each one and talk about why they're mistakes and why you could potentially lose so much money if you make these mistakes. So number one is stock pick. A lot of people, when they think about stock market investing, stock picking is the first thing they think about. They're like, okay, in order for me to invest in the stock market, I have to learn how to pick the right stocks, how to pick which company stocks. And so they read articles about the top five stocks that you have to buy in 2023 or you know the best tech stocks the top five best tech stocks that you have to invest in you know these sensational titles and certain articles and certain youtube videos and people are tricked into thinking that stock picking is the only way but the truth is stock picking is not the only way and it is also not the best way the truth is most people lose money when they stock pick over 90 percent of people who trade who stock pick they end up losing money. And so what is essentially happening is that these people, they put so much time and energy and effort into stock picking and they end up actually losing money in the end after all these efforts are put in. So imagine if you were hired to work a job and after a year of working there, you end up losing thousands of dollars. Like that's so not worth it. And that is essentially what stock picking is for the great majority of people. And yes, that was also me back in 2019. So don't be that girl on the screen. And number two is invest money that you don't have or money that you'll need in the next couple years. Here's the thing. 
The stock market is volatile. Even though we can say that when we look at the long-term trajectory of the stock market, it is overall going up so far, we cannot guarantee how the stock market is going to perform in the short run. So let's say for the next three to five years. So here's the thing. When you invest money in the stock market, this has to be money that you're willing to part with. This has to be money that you don't need to use right now, because let's say you're investing money into the stock market that you'll probably need for down payment in the the next three years, then what happens if we enter into a bear market in three years? What happens when by the time you need the money, the market is crashing and all the stock prices are going down. So that means you're forced to sell your shares at a loss. We can take a look at the past 10 years of the US stock market and you can see that there are a lot of ups and downs. But when you're actually in the now, you cannot tell if this is the bottom. You cannot tell if the stock market is going to go up or down from here. And you also cannot tell what is going to happen in the next three years. And so that is why it is so crucial for you to only invest money that you don't need to use in the next three to five years because you don't know what's going to happen. And the worst thing that could happen is for you to be forced to sell at a loss. Number three is hire a fund manager or buy a mutual fund. So a lot of times we expect that when we pay experts to do things, they're going to do it better than us, right? Like, or else why would we pay a high fee to people to do something if they can't do it better than us? But the truth is most fund managers, people who pick stocks for a living, they do not beat the market. So same thing with stock picking, even people who do it for a living, they do not beat the market. And so what's the point of us? paying a percentage of our overall portfolio to them, to these like fund managers who do not even beat the market. If we can just follow the market ourselves, why do we want to hire someone to do this for us and end up making less profit and end up paying them a fee? And the fourth mistake is copy other people's portfolios. And I know this is super common because the second most asked question is, Cherry, what are you investing in? What is in your portfolio? Can I just like copy your stock picks, right? Like this is such a common question. And I think this stems from people just thinking that once they copy someone who's rich, you know, a rich person's portfolio or a success successful person's portfolio, they can just become rich and successful themselves. But the thing is, when it comes to investing in the stock market, there are two things that are super important. Number one is timing. And number two, is your own investor personality. So let's talk about number one, the timing. Even if you were to buy the exact same thing as I buy, like let's say I um, I bought Tesla, Tesla is in my portfolio, and you decide to buy Tesla too, but because I bought Tesla back in 2018 and you're buying Tesla right now in 2023, the stock prices are completely different as you can see, you know, 2019 versus 2023. And so that is why it is so important for you to not copy other people's portfolios to the T because even if you were to copy their portfolios to the T, which is unlikely because you can only see tip of the iceberg, you can't see every single thing they're investing in. But let's say even if you're able to copy their portfolios to the T, the timing is going to be drastically different. Like people who buy a couple years before, they're buying at a drastically different price compared to right now. And so that's the number one reason why you don't want to just copy other people's portfolios. And number two, the second reason is your unique investor personality. And this is something that I teach my students and side of Early Retirement Academy. A lot of people, they start stock market investing by just copying other people. But the thing is, we're all different people here. We have different risk tolerance. We have different financial plans. We have different personalities. Maybe some of us, we like to be more hands on with our investments. And some of us, we like to be more lazy and more passive with our investment strategies. And so depending on what your actual investor personality is, you can't just like copy other people's strategies and copy other people's portfolios. And it also depends on your circle of competence. For example, someone who is very knowledgeable in Web3 should not be investing in the same way as someone who's super knowledgeable in the brick and mortar stores, right? And so you really want to understand your own investor personality before you just like, you know, copy and paste other people's strategies and portfolios. And the fifth mistake is expecting it to make you rich overnight or just expecting it to make you rich, period. The thing is, there are too many sensational titles online everywhere, like videos, articles of people just like flaunting their wealth and saying, yeah, I did all this by just like investing in the stock market. But what they're not showing is how are they funding their portfolios? Because here's the thing, 7% of return in a $500 portfolio is 
drastically different than a $5 million portfolio. That is $35 versus $350 thousand dollars that's a drastic difference and so for the people who are flying their wealth saying that i made like a thousand dollars a day from my portfolio or the people who are like i made uh let's say a hundred k from my stock market portfolio last year like also look at how much money do they currently have they're playing with big money and so that's why they're able to make big money and also lose big money but you know most people they only like to see the the bright size you know the gains that they have and they don't really show their losses that's for a different day but here's the thing you can't just expect the stock market to make you rich overnight or just like make you rich at all if you don't have the funds to support it you need a large enough portfolio for it to make sense you need to have a large enough portfolio for you to make a significant amount of gains and if you're just playing with like a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks and especially if this is your first ever portfolio then don't expect it to make you rich and i'll further explain you know the difference between the first second third fourth portfolios and so now that we talked about the five mistakes let's talk about what to do instead you want to invest only with the money that you will not need in the next three to five years and so if you have plans to purchase a house in the next five years let's say then don't put that down payment into the stock market you also only want to invest money that you can bear to lose because the stock market it is still unpredictable Predictable. We still don't know for sure that we are going to gain money for sure in the time span that we expect. And so don't invest money that you can't bear losing. If you are going to have trouble putting food on the table, if you're going to have trouble paying rent next month, then do not put that money into the stock market. And you also should expect to grow wealth slowly in the process, unless you already have like, let's say 5 million bucks that's ready for you to just invest, then sure, you can, you know, grow more wealth at a rapid pace because you already have a large chunk of money, a large initial capital. But if you're, you know, someone like me a couple years ago, just starting without a bunch of money, then don't expect to get rich overnight or just like grow your portfolio into a seven figure portfolio with just like a hundred bucks. That is really unrealistic. And also keep in mind that time in the market is more important than timing the market, especially because we have no way of perfectly timing the market. We have no way to know if the market's gonna go up or down tomorrow. We have no way to know whether we have already hit rock bottom or is the market gonna go down even more. If you don't have this mindset, don't even start investing in the stock market. It is not worth your time and it is going to cause you to be super disappointed and potentially lose a bunch of money like what I did in 2019. You're still here? Okay, so let's talk about what to do instead, step by step. So over here, I'll be sharing with you one post that I made on my IG a couple days ago, which is how to actually start investing as a complete beginner. And the title is called How to Invest in Stocks to Retire step-by-step -step tutorial. So if you want to start investing in stocks, there are two types of portfolios that you can choose from. You can choose between tax advantage and taxable. And I personally prefer to start with tax advantage because um, if it's available, because that means you get to save on taxes. So um, you can research on the actual account, the specific tax advantage account to see if you're even eligible, because if you make too much money, you're actually not eligible. And so a really common type of tax advantage account is called a Roth IRA. And so let's talk about like why a Roth IRA. Having a Roth IRA means your earnings, aka your capital gains, aka the money you gain from the stock market when your stocks go up, they grow tax free. So this is super great because you probably know that if we're uh, salaried, if we earn a W-2, then we pay taxes on that. But inside of a Roth IRA, if you pick the right stocks or if you pick the right index funds, which we'll talk about later, if you uh, pick the right stocks or index funds that go up in value over time, you your gains can actually grow tax-free. So you don't need to pay taxes on that, which is super great. And number two, you can also take out qualified withdrawal tax-free and penalty-free after five years. And this is also known as a five-year rule. You can do a little more research on this, but basically with the specific things that you're using your money towards, let's say your first home purchase, um, you can actually take that money out of your Roth IRA penalty-free and tax-free, which is again, another perk. And number three, you don't have mandatory withdrawals, which means when you are old, you can better manage your taxes because if you have mandatory withdrawals, that means, uh, let's say if you're 70 years old and you're trying to take money out, if the mandatory withdrawals, like you 
have to take, let's say, ten thousand dollars out, then that means you have to pay taxes on the ten thousand dollars you take out, and you can't really plan your taxes all that well. And when you're really old, it's probably like in your best interest to not pay too much in taxes, so it doesn't cut into your living expenses. So this is also another perk of having a Roth IRA. And another perk is that there is no contribution age limit, so as long as you have qualified earned income. So this is also why some U.S. parents they like to set up Roth IRA accounts for their children and have their children earn some income by working for their companies, you know, for the parents' companies. And that is also another way of how、uh, little kids can build wealth from a young age. And because I'm not American, I did not have that privilege or I did not have that opportunity to have a Roth IRA at a young age. But、um, for my future children, if I were to have any, then this could be something that I do for them. And number five, there is no income tax on inherited Roth IRA. So if you are in the lucky position in which you can inherit a Roth IRA or you can pass your Roth IRA down to your kids, then this is also an added perk. And now let's explore how to actually invest in a Roth IRA. So, like I mentioned, you want to make sure your income does not exceed the limit, and this is for year 2023: 153,000 for single people and 228,000 dollars for married filing jointly. And if your income does exceed the income limit, you can look into something called the backdoor Roth IRA, which I believe I made a video on this a couple years back.、Um, so. Check that one out if you make over this amount. And number two, you want to choose the brokerage that you want to use, and there are two really mainstream ones. One is Vanguard, another is Fidelity. I personally chose Fidelity because when I wanted to open a Vanguard account, it was actually really complicated. And for some reason, because I'm not American, they actually had to make me fill in like a paper application that I had to mail in. And as a you know college student who had limited funds, I don't want to pay for postal. Like I don't even want to go to a postal office. And so I decided to go with Fidelity because it is just way easier. I can do everything online, and I don't have to mail in like a paper version of my application. So that's the main reason why I chose Fidelity. And I also know、uh, Jeremy from Financial Education. He also likes to use Fidelity, and a lot of my friends and you know ex colleagues they also use Fidelity. And number three is、um, fill out your information. So、um, I have a screenshot tutorial in the next couple pages, and you want to put money into your Roth IRA and make sure it doesn't exceed sixty five hundred dollars this year. And then you can choose what to invest in. So keep in mind, like opening a Roth IRA is kind of like、um, opening a bank account, but in order for it to not just be a bank account, you have to choose what you want to invest in, which I will also walk you through later on in the video. And so let's、uh, look at the. Actual screenshots that I took. So this is just with my phone with the Fidelity app, and you can just like download Fidelity on your phone, or you can use the desktop version if you are using a laptop right now. And so I'm using Fidelity as an example because I've been a customer for years. And here you can choose your retirement account type. There are three types within the tax advantage account, and I chose a Roth IRA. And after that, it just like takes you through some questions, like very simple questions, like what do you do for a living? And for me, because I'm self-employed, I wrote self-employed. And so basically, you just need to answer all their questions. It should take like no more than I want to say a minute. It's like super quick. I say five minutes here because I'm just like more generous、um, with my time estimates. But yeah, it should take you like. One minute, thirty seconds to answer the questions, and then you can just click the green button, open my account, and that is how you open a Roth IRA. And then from there, you can deposit your sixty-five、um, hundred dollars into it, or deposit whatever you can, right? And remember, we said like don't put money into your account that you cannot bear losing. And so, if you have trouble putting food on the table for the next month, or you know for your next meal, then please do not invest. That is not the right time to invest. Only put money in that、um, you can bear losing and. You can part with for at least three to five years. So that is how you open up a Roth IRA. And let's also talk about when you choose investments, like exactly what to choose, right? What I like to search is something called a low-cost index fund. So Google is going to be your friend.、Um, this is where I find like. A lot of stock picks. This is how I do my initial research when it comes to picking stocks and picking index funds. And so over here,、um, I just type in like on Google "low cost index fund," and this is what we want to look for.、Um, for a specific reason, I've explained in a different video, but this is definitely、um, one place to start. I won't dive into like all the whys, or else this video will be way too long. But、um, here are just a list of the zero cost index funds that Fidelity offers. And because I use Fidelity, I like to look within Fidelity for my research. But if you use Vanguard, 
then look into Vanguard. So you can see how um, there are different funds and comparisons between Fidelity and Vanguard. And I personally have invested in uh, this one, mostly Fidelity's zero total market index fund. And so there's a zero percent expense ratio, which is super awesome because that means you don't have to pay extra fees in this index fund. And you can actually click into each one to do further research to see, um, for example, like um, expense ratio. And you can also see um, how has it been performing in the uh, past three years. And you can see how one year is actually negative, which is why I say you don't want to invest money that you have to use in the next three to five years because it's not guaranteed. It's like the stock market does not just go up. It also goes down. And so that's why in the one year mark, is actually uh, negative 8.2%. And so this is why, right? Like when I tell you things this is based on stats, this is based on facts, and I just, I don't just like pull stuff out of my butt. And um, over here, year to date is 9%. Great, but you can see the one year return is actually in the negative. But in the three year, it is also 9.58%. So you can look at the historical um, performance. You can also look at the top 10 holdings and you can see a lot of these. They are actually really big companies in the US stock market. So for example, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Berkshire Hathaway. So this is Warren Buffett's company. Um, there's also Google, which is Alphabet, um, United Health, and then again, Google, uh, Class A and Class C, Johnson Johnson, Exxon Mobil, and JP Morgan Chase. So these are super big companies that we um, have a basic understanding of, which makes me feel more comfortable, right? Like I never want to invest in something that I have no clue about, which is outside of my circle of competence, which is also a concept that we have discussed earlier when we were talking about the investor personality. So this is also something that you want to look at. And um, of course you can do a little more digging, but that is basically my process of figuring out like what stocks to invest in, right? Um, what index funds to invest in. And because we talked about we don't want to stock pick, especially in the very beginning, we want to look at index funds. And the keyword that I like to look for is low cost index funds. So no matter which platform that you're using, you want to make sure that you enter in low cost index funds into your browser to figure out like uh, with the brokerage that you want to use. Let's say if you want to use Fidelity, then you want to search Fidelity low cost index fund. If you want to use Vanguard, then you want to search Vanguard low cost index fund. And these are the keywords that you you want to find because like we said we don't want to pay huge fees to these fund managers who do a crappy job in my opinion and from my experience since retiring early from corporate at 25 years old this is what i really think about investing in the stock market i think investing in the stock market is good for normal retirement and for me personally i have several different taxable and tax advantage accounts such as my of course 401k my roth ira and also my hsa which stands for health savings account and i also have a taxable account that i did just for fun for kind of like youtube um just fun displaying purposes that I did a couple years back and that also has multiple uh, six figures but here's the thing like I don't depend on my stocks to retire early like in fact I retired early without touching my stocks without liquidating any of my assets so this is because of a couple reasons number one is because I consider my stocks as my assets I don't want to just like liquidate it if I don't need to I'd rather it just like be in the background and grow in the background without me like doing anything to it and that's like literally just snowballing into bigger bigger snowball. I don't want to touch my nest egg if I don't need to, if I am able to survive without using stocks. So that's number one. And number two is that because I'm retiring early at such a young age, at 25 years old, and yes, I retire from corporate, which, you know, I guess it's just corporate, but I can still do other things in my life. Yes, that is true. But I still think there's a lot of uncertainty um, because I retired at 25 years old. That means I have like around 80 years of uncertainty, assuming that I'd live until around 100 years old then that's almost 80 years of retirement years, 80 years of uncertainty. And so I definitely don't want to liquidate my assets, my nest egg, if I don't need to. And another part of it is like, even if let's say I don't, uh, I don't live until hundred years old, let's say I live until 80 years old, which is actually pretty young compared to my older relatives because I have pretty old relatives. So even if I live until 80 years old, that still means I have around 60 years of just like retirement years of the unknown. And the longer retirement years you have, like the longer um, years that you do, I guess, no corporate job that you don't work a job, the more uncertainty there is, in my opinion, because when you don't have a job, you don't have guaranteed income and you cannot guarantee how much money you're going to earn in those long stretches of years. And so there's more uncertainty. And so to me, it is more safe for me to just focus on what is within my control.
And as much as I'd like to control the stock market and, you know, just make all my favorite stocks go up, that is outside of my control. That is outside of my power. And so I don't want to depend on just stocks to retire early. That is for my, you know, personal, just mental health, well-being. I don't want to stress over things that are outside of my control. That is why I decided to retire early without touching my stocks. But it doesn't mean that I'll never touch my stocks. Maybe like when I hit normal retirement years, like when I'm 60 or 70 or 80, I might start selling off some of my stocks. I don't know. I don't know for sure. That's like a long time from now. But as of right now, because I don't need to liquidate my stocks, I don't plan to. I use stock market investing as kind of a vehicle for my normal retirement years, not for my current early retirement years. So, so far in the video, we talked about what is actually the stock market and how you can use the stock market to make money and potentially retire early. Specifically, we talked about the five common myths and mistakes of the stock market and and what to do instead, the actual actionable plans, because I'm all about taking action. If you're just watching a video and you're not taking action, like if you're not going to Fidelity, if you're not going to Google finding these low cost index funds, then what are you doing? You've watched till this far, like do something with it. And remember, I always say this, corporate does not have your back. The stock market does not have your back. You have your back. And so you want to have your own finances within your control by doing proper research and understanding exactly how you're building your income streams and how you're building your financial future. Build multiple income streams so you don't have to depend on any specific one of them. Even if it's a stock market, you don't want to just depend on the stock market. So build multiple income streams so you have more eggs in multiple baskets and you have the option to retire early from what no longer serves you. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!